Lord a shout of praise. Give the Lord a shout of praise. If you are watching at home, give the Lord a shout of praise in your living room, wherever you are watching from. Give the Lord a dance, a dance, a dance of praise and a shout of praise. Make a joyful noise. Shout unto the Lord with a voice of triumph. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. The joy of the Lord is my strength. I say the joy of the Lord is? The joy of the Lord is my strength. 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 Wow! The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord is my strength. In the morning. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Every day. The joy of Sometimes when prayer and fasting doesn't seem to work, joy will work. Because in God's presence is what? Fullness of joy. And at his right hand are what? Pleasures forever. Give the Lord a shout of praise. You may be seated. Wow. What a word. Thank you for that great word. Uh, I was mightily blessed. You know, sometimes we are so concerned about going to deeper things that we leave out the things that brought us to the deep things. And, and the challenge many times is that grown-ups forget that children are being born. And so we tailor everything to meet the needs of the grown-up and we forget that there are children still being born. And, and it's, it's important for all of us, preachers, teachers, evangelists, apostles, prophets, Bible school students, and everyone that's a vessel in God's hand, don't be too deep that you end up confusing yourself and your hearers. We see this happening in the body of Christ. When you go talk about the Holy Ghost and the baptism with the Holy Ghost, some people feel like you're olden days. You, you are not relevant. And they talk about you must be seeker sensitive because people that are seeking don't want things that will confuse them. The world is already confused. We need to get them out of the confusion. And it's only the anointing that breaks the yoke. Zechariah said in the book of Zechariah, chapter number 4, from verse 6, it says, was speaking to Zerubbabel, not by might, nor by power, 
But by my spirit, says the Lord, who art thou, O mountain, before Zerubbabel? Thou shalt be made a plain. The hands of Zerubbabel lay the foundation, and the hands of Zerubbabel will finish it. The apostles couldn't do much. Jesus knew the only way they were going to impact and influence the world and turn the world the right side up was not through telling stories, Sunday school stories, but through the power of the Holy Ghost. And he said to them in Luke chapter 24, verse 49, don't leave Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father. And thank God, this is that. I said, this is what? This is that. Years ago, I was somewhere ministering to a couple that were almost divorcing. And they had fights upon fights, and they had just finished one of the sessions of fight. When my wife and I went to visit them, and I, we tried to counsel them, and with all that we knew in counseling and marriage restoration, we tried it and nothing was working. And family, let me tell you many times, when everything fails, the Holy Ghost never fails. So I just told my wife, let's begin to pray in tongues. So in that sitting room, we turned it to a Pentecostal prayer ground. We started to pray in tongues very loud in their house. And you could see it. They were looking at us in shock. And we prayed and prayed. And when I was done, the man started to speak in fluent Zulu to me. So I, I, I looked at him and said, I don't understand what you are saying. He said, don't lie to me. I said, no, but I don't understand the language. Then, back then, I didn't know it was Zulu. So, and he said to me, no, you were speaking in fluent Zulu. And this is what you were saying. Everything we have gone through as a couple, you listed them by date, date, date. And then you told us what to do to fix the problem. I was only just communing with God, but I didn't know the Holy Ghost knows what the preacher doesn't know. Hey, stop trusting your own wisdom. Stop trusting your ability to counsel people. The greatest counselor is the Holy Ghost. Wow, Jesus. Who? And from that day, that family was restored. I was preaching at a crusade and got to a point where I began to minister to the crowd. And it was in Vinduk, Namibia. I did not know there was somebody from the DRC there with problems. And this person, the problems were so, so many that they were confused and they saw the poster of the crusade and came. Just saying, Lord, if you don't turn things around, it's over with my life. And I didn't know. And you know, as a preacher, we know in part. So you only minister based on the utterance that is given to you. And when you speak in a limited language like English or Afrikaans, you can only say so much. So by the time I was done preaching, I started to pray in the Holy Ghost. And by the time I was done and the meeting was over, this woman ran to me as I was going out. And she started to speak to me in fluent French. Now, I don't speak in French. So I didn't know, apart from Koma Saba. And uh, Whatever words I, I knew before that had slipped off my mind as I grew. So, but the person was speaking to me in French. So I looked at her and I said, I was speaking in English. 
when she was speaking in French. So I said to her, woman, what are you saying? I don't understand French. And she said to me, you are a preacher. You just preached about sin and righteousness. Don't lie. I said, what, what do you mean? I'm not lying. I don't understand French. She said, no, you speak French. And you speak the very, very high level French. Your vocabularies are vocabularies that are not used by the common French speaking people. So I asked her, what do you mean? She said, I was instructing angels and commanding things that were not in line, in, not only in her life, but in the DRC, to come into divine alignment. And she said, she that came there feeling suicidal, she left the place completely changed, completely transformed, completely pre revived and on fire for the Lord. Now, I could have preached for three weeks and given her a lot of verses and big biblical theological jargons. And she may have ended up still committing suicide. Let me tell you, people, the Holy Ghost knows how to fix that marriage. The Holy Ghost knows that investment that will work. Sometimes you are trying to go this way, but the Holy Ghost knows, just as the scripture says, there is a way that seemeth right unto a man. But the end, not at the beginning, not midway, but the end thereof are the, they end up in the ways of death or destruction. But the Holy Ghost knows where there are detours. He knows where there is a breakdown. And he's, he, because he sees ahead, he scans through the entire earth because it could not have been created without him hovering over the face of the deep. So he's able to see into darkness. He's able to bring forth and scan the entire earth and see the treasures that belong to you. See the blessings that are yours. See the man that you're supposed to marry. See the kind of investment you should invest in. And when you can, you choose deliberately to depend on him, you will not be disappointed. Some time ago, I was spending time in prayer. And I prayed over all the different, you know, we, we usually come to pray and we get our prayer points. Point one, point two, point three. And then most of them are all around I, me, and myself. But the Holy Ghost knows the needs of others beyond you and me. And because the law of increase works with the law of release. And when you come to God and you talk about your need, he's looking for a seed from you. But you cannot give if you are not already given. That's why today you have to receive the power of the Holy Ghost. And then you are enabled. Because the receiving of the power, when you get born again, you actually receive. The, the, you can't be born again without the Holy Spirit. Because he is the one who convicts the world of sin, of righteousness and judgment. But to be a vessel, to be a grace carrier that will not just be a receiver, but become a distributor. It only happens when you are empowered. Because he said to them, don't leave until you be endued with power, not from the government, but from above. And the Bible says, a man can receive nothing 
unless it is given from where? Above. James chapter 1, verse 17, we are told, every good and every perfect gift cometh up down from above, from the Father of lights, with whom there is no shadow of turning. John the Baptist, the one who said, I baptize you with water, but the one coming after me, who sent us, I am not fit, I'm not qualified, I'm not enabled to unloot, to lose, when he comes, he will baptize you with what? The Holy Ghost and with what? Power or fire. That's why we have faith on what? Fire. And you can't have faith that is on fire without the baptism with the Holy Ghost. And you get empowered. You are enabled to be a blessing. God never expects us to bless the world without him first blessing us. He said to Abraham in the book of Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. First of all, he called him to leave, give up something, give up your people, your place of comfort, where you are used to. I'm taking you to an unfamiliar territory. To the natural mind, the realm of the Holy Ghost is unfamiliar territory. That's why when you tell somebody, just allow it flow. In their brain, they are trying to figure out, like some of you watching on television, you were wondering, what's this preacher? I am 69 years old. And he's trying to teach me a new language. The things of the spirit are spiritually decoded. They are spiritually excavated. They are spiritually unveiled. You can't use your natural mind and understand the things of the spirit. One day I was ministering. You know, thank God for the Holy Ghost. Somebody lift your hands and say, thank you, Holy Ghost. And I was part of the band, just like these people. And I was playing the guitar, like our lady there. You're the first guitarist, uh, lady guitarist I'm seeing in a, in, a, in a long while. Let's give her a good hand. That's, she's taking, going into fami unfamiliar territories. Only the Holy Ghost can do that. So I was playing the guitar, and suddenly the anointing of the Holy Ghost came upon me. I dropped the guitar. I broke the protocol. I wasn't the preacher for the night. But the Holy Ghost said, it's time I want to move. Then he moved me from the guitar, and suddenly a surge of people started running to the front. And this lady came, and she was blind. And there was something dropping like mucus. So, and with my hand, I laid my hands, bam, to pray. And the Holy Ghost said, stop. I thought that I was, somebody was speaking from behind. So I stopped. Listen to the next instruction. I'm telling you, life becomes easy when you get into the wavelength of the Holy Ghost. Stop trying things with your natural mind. With the realm of the spirit, the calculator doesn't work. English language does not work. Grammar doesn't work. So, I went ahead again, laid my hands. Because that's the, the normal one we should do. Lay hands on the sick. So now I laid my hands and the Holy Ghost said, stop. So I stopped. And he said, tell her to come close to you. So I asked her, come, come, come. And she came. And the Holy Ghost said, stick out your tongue and clean the eyes. Wow, you, you know how you felt now was exactly how I felt. 
So I went back, I said, Holy Ghost, this cannot be you. <laughs> you, you, are, you are cleaner than this. I'm not go I, I, I said, Satan, I bind you. Get thee behind me. And I tried again. And the Holy Ghost said, I said, stick out your tongue, clean her eyes. That happened about three times. So I took a deep breath, swallowed the, the last saliva in my mouth, and held her head, opened the eyes, and started to clean. Then the second hour, I did not know that she was led into the meeting because she couldn't see nothing. The moment I was done cleaning, I was less left messed up with the after effect of the cleaning. <laughs> but the woman started to jump. I can see, I can see, I can see. I would have prayed for one month. I would have called intercessors to tarry. I would have told them, press in. And I would have told others, just hold back. Then I would have told others, release. Then others command, others rebuke. You know all the spiritual jargons and language. And the Holy Ghost said, no, only this. When I was done, the woman left that place walking home, knowing her way home. It's got nothing to do with how powerful I am because even I was confused. But when the Holy Ghost said, clean, see, my convenience, my reputation almost came in the way. But that simple act of obedience, when the Holy Ghost prompts you and says, give, don't figure out how the bills will be paid. Because creation could not have been possible without the Holy Ghost. And everything that you see in and around the world, the universe, the galaxies and whatever, the Holy Ghost made that creation possible. And there was no overdraft taken from the bank. There were no pledges received. There was no offering message given. And nobody had to whine the Christians by saying, if you can give 24 rand, you will get 24 days blessing. There was no gimmicks, no winding up. But when the Holy Ghost moved, creation took place. And God wants to get us back to the realm of the Holy Ghost. When we will give by the prompting of the Holy Spirit. These days, you go in many circles. People have to get the preacher that can shout the loudest. And can use scriptures. And all that they try. I see God moving God is going to touch you, take it, 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 take it. And they almost kiss the television. In telling people and winding people's emotion. But the Holy Ghost doesn't need a hype. He created everything. I said he created everything. That business breakthrough is a secret to you, but it is an open secret to the Holy Ghost. But as you obey his promptings, the Bible says in the book of Isaiah, chapter 1, verse 19, if they be willing and what? Obedient. They shall eat the good of the land. Good is already provided. But it takes willingness Readiness of heart, a position that says, I have 
But I don't only have, but I am willing to part with what I have for something that is of greater worth than what I have. So it says, if they be willing and obedient, they shall eat the what? The good of the land. There's a good in South Africa. There's a good in Europe. There's a good in England. There's a good in China. There is a good in America. Do you know some people are running from Africa thinking that their help is in America? Thank God for America. But do you know there are broke Americans that are finding their way out? You are running away from East London. You want to go to London, England. And you don't know some people in London, England are seeing business opportunities in East London. You are running away from Soweto in Johannesburg, headed to Soweto in Vinduk. But somebody in Soweto, Vinduk, is running to Soweto, South Africa, because he sees opportunity. I pray, may the Holy Ghost open your eyes. May you see beyond what the natural eyes can see. May God open your eyes. May God open your eyes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The disciples of John the Baptist came to him and they said, Do you know the one you are baptized? The one you said, when he comes, he's going to baptize people with the Holy Ghost and with fire and power. He is also doing what you are doing. He's baptizing on the other side, and the crowds are going over to him. John had an understanding that some of our young preachers don't have. The spirit of competition almost got the best of him. He almost forgot for a minute or for a for a moment because of what the people were saying that the one you baptized the one that you prepared the way for the one that you set up the platform for is now doing what you are doing and the crowds are leaving us very fast Today, because of the spirit of competition that has given birth to the spirit of greed is the reason why so many people are misapplying scriptures just to get the crowds to follow. Some preachers have become like African politicians. When they see the crowds, they don't see people they need to invest in and on for their own future. But they see potential carriers of what they will need to feed their greed. And that, not only in the world, but you see it in the church. But John was smart. And John the Baptist said, when they were saying that in John chapter 3, verse 27, he said, A man can receive nothing unless it is given him from above. You watching me, don't depend on your connections, don't depend on your wealth. Don't depend on your beauty, your education, your connection, your background. Depend on the Holy Ghost. Because when God blesses, Solomon said in the book of Proverbs chapter 10, verse 22, the blessings of the Lord, it maketh rich and he adds no sorrow but the chase after materialism has pierced many people not just the people of the world but even the church people will cook up miracles because the Holy Ghost seems too slow so they organize the miracle just to get the crowds 
and I don't want to sound controversial, but I speak from South Africa to the rest of the world. You know, preachers here, we have mastered the art of recreating miracles. If it's not working fast, we will speed it up. And so today you find people that feed people snakes, petrol because the Holy Ghost is not enough fire. So you need petrol. And if resurrection is not working, we will work it up. Whatever. But all these things are happening because people don't depend on the Holy Ghost. He has been the power that came upon Jesus. That the Bible says in Acts chapter 10 verse 38. Jesus Christ whom God anointed with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all and healing all and healing all and healing all you and I are the custodians of the healing of the people today and I'm not against doctors but preachers are trying to become medical doctors giving people prescription somebody can't sleep at night and his demons and you say to the person you need to take tranquilizers or trans whatever they call it do you know the longest word in the dictionary is a medical word because they confuse us by the time you are trying to pronounce the word it has created a new disease You, and, and do you know why doctors write and even the best in decoding handwriting can't decode it? Only somebody that is in the same profession, that a pharmacy, that they have an alignment with, what you get, I have a cut. So you are looking at it and you are thinking it's many, many to kill. But the moment that he hits the table of a pharmacy, they know every drug. But after giving you, they charge you. But when you come to the Holy Ghost, Jesus went about doing good and healing all, 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 all. Somebody jump on your feet and shout all. Dr. Andre, we are in the last days. We are in the last days. These are the days the Bible says in the book of Joel, chapter 2, from verse 28. In the last days, God will pour his spirit upon how many flesh somebody shout all shout all god is about to fill children in the sunday school with the power of the holy ghost god is about to fill marketplace people with the power of the holy ghost god is about to fill women with the power of the holy ghost god is about to get the pilot as he's flying the plane filled with the holy ghost can you imagine your pilot is speaking to you and he's saying, we just reached uh, 30,000 feet above sea. What's happening? What's happening? Because we are in the last days, God will pour his spirit upon all, 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 all flesh. Is a pilot flesh? Pilots, do they have flesh? Mafias, do they have flesh? Movie, movie, mo, mo, mo. the movie makers, do they have flesh? 
while you are somebody is on set and they are recording they are shooting a movie that they have invested billions on a world changer a game changer and the person is in set and then they, they go count down go 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 ah no no stop 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 somebody said pastor girl i don't think that will ever happen didn't the bible say in the book of psalms 24 from verse 1 the earth is the lord doesn't belong to beverly hills doesn't belong to hollywood some of us christians we are magnifying hollywood above the bible the devil is a liar the holy ghost is still at work the holy ghost is still at work do you know the time jesus walked the earth there was no internet so no verse could say anything about the internet there no facebook there was no twitter there was no instagram there was no is it dwindle or dwindle all those things were not there but the bible already told us that in the end times the glory of the lord will fill the earth the presence of god will fill the earth and god will retake the airwaves now we are speaking here they are watching us all over the world that's why we must come back with the gospel through the power of the holy ghost not looking for ways to be politically correct can i say this to you all the bible is not up for an amendment in parliament the bible is not up for the greatest debater you can debate it but it is settled in heaven and on earth jesus the same yesterday today and forever god doesn't need your assistance he doesn't need my assistance let him do what he does best and i see in this last hour through the power of the holy ghost god is empowering his church for the end time harvest the devil is a liar there is an onslaught of the devil because of people that have abused the prosperity gospel that abuse the prosperity gospel and satan is pushing us to the world to make us redefine scripture somebody said to me stop using the word prosperity in all your preaching so i asked him go remove it from the bible then i will not use it just because some politicians rob people of their money does not make governance evil just because people have had accidents and have been rolled over by cars and they die does not mean we should revert to walking on foot just because aeroplanes crash does not mean we should only fly with the wings of angels the devil is a liar what god wants us to uphold is truth everything else will fail our gimmicks will fail our maneuvers will fail our greed will fail but the word of god will never 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 change there can never be true influence where there is no affluence Zechariah chapter 1 verse 17 the Bible says through prosperity 
will I spread my cities abroad. Luke chapter 8 from verse 1. It came to pass afterwards that he went through every city, every village, bringing the message of the good news. The 12 were with him. But because they gave up everything and followed him, they couldn't pay the bills. But certain women that had encountered miracles, they gave of their substance. You may be here right now, that miracle in your life is not a setup for God to come take from you. It's to keep you alive, strong and healthy so that you work as Paul said right into the Ephesians in the book of Ephesians chapter 4 he says let him who used to steal steal no longer but let him work with his hand that which is good that he may what have to give your level, how high you go with God, is decided by the level of your spiritual investment in the lives of people. When we get to heaven, nobody will show their cars. Nobody will show their estates. Nobody will show their aeroplanes. There are no bank accounts there being displayed. Only souls. That's the greatest investment. Isaiah chapter 2, from verse 1, the Bible says, shall come to pass in the last days. And God is saying, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be exalted above all other mountains. Then the nations will come streaming to it. God wants to empower you so that when the world sees you, they will stand in amazement. When you say, get born again, they will ask you, how many times? How many times? Nobody wants to be associated with a struggling person. Africa, from where we are airing from, we are not the begging continent. We have received enough from other continents especially from america this is the time for africa thank god for fbn started right here but today is all over the world and it is important that we become kingdom financiers right from the soil of africa the only way to break out of poverty is the life of giving Acts chapter 20 verse 35. The writer, who is Luke, you know Luke, Luke is the writer. And Luke was a medical doctor, but he wasn't pres prescribing aspirin and panadol. It was scripture. And what did he say? Don't forget what the Lord said, that it is more blessed to do what? To give than to receive. Why is Africa down? It's not because of witches and wizards that we claim are disturbing us. If there's any continent where people worship idols more than Africa is Asia. Go to China. Every other Chinese you see, if not all of them, they bow before idols. The next Chinese you see, follow him home as he goes, just go with him. And the moment you reach home, you will see the carving of the idol. Yet, yet, they are not begging because they are making a contribution from the wisdom that God has given to them. Africa, we are begging because we think every nation owes us because we are underprivileged. The next day you go to the shops or by the roadside, under the bridge, and you see this beggar, 
This person comes out of the shop begging you. At the end of the month, you just got paid 10,000 rand or 1,000 American dollars or 1,000 British pounds or Euro dollars. Do you look at this poor beggar and say, let's share half, half. Nobody gives a poor man a lot of money because they, you can't trust them to manage it well. Why is Africa perpetually poor? It's not because the dollars don't like us. It's not because pounds don't like us. It's because we have a poverty mentality, a beggarly mentality, especially people that look like me, that seem to have been born at night. We think because the white that fell maybe have fallen into bleach, they are the ones that stole all our resources. But all the African nations are now free. How come we are still struggling even though there is self-governance? Simple. We hate taking responsibility in giving. We think when we travel to America, we're not there to bless them. We want to preach around so we can gather offerings. We go to the UK, the same. We are not investing into the nations. But I want to charge you, Africans. This is the hour that we must make our contribution to the world. The one that does not use his talent, even the little you have, will be taken away from you. But I pray, may God help Africa. I want to challenge you to do something. Those of you that are here and those that are watching through the airwaves, I want to challenge you to do what you've not done. I have no promise to make that if you give within 20 days, this will happen. I don't need to look for verses to convince you. It is a law. Give and it shall be given. Everything that God created revolves around sowing and reaping. Anytime you come to God and speak about your need, he asks, create a seed. Because it's a law put in seed. The moment you plant it, you don't have to go under and check. Where is it now? Okay. You don't know how it grows. Okay, it's moving, it's moving. Oh, it's up now, it's up now, it's up now. Oh, the leaves are coming. Okay, then oh, the, the, the first fruit is out. You, don't, you just go to bed. You have released the law. Seed time and harvest. If we as African Christians, European Christians, American Christians, world Christians, we stop thinking, I have too many problems until my problems are over then I will start taking responsibility in the area of giving. You will remain perpetually in need forever. Because the poor people of your village, of your city, of your neighborhood, from when you were a child that never took responsibility, they are still poor till now. Africa. You say, but why are you just talking to Africa when America is watching? When Europe is watching, because I am an African, I know our issues. So can I talk to us? Yes. Let's wake up. Let's put off the nappies. Let's throw away the feeding bottle that always needs to be refilled by America. Let's get up in the same Bible. This Bible works in America. There is no African Bible. There's no European Bible. It's, the Bible says, study, study to show yourself approved. A workman that needed not be ashamed, rightly divided in the word of truth. Jesus said to them in John chapter 8, verse 31 and 32. He was speaking to disciples, followers. He said, if you continue in, in me and my word, you shall know the truth. Verse 32 says, the truth that you know shall make you free. Another translation says, set you free. 
Knowledge brings freedom. Proverbs 29 verse 11 big. The Bible says there, by revelation or by knowledge will my righteous one be delivered. We are running around looking for deliverance from weird prophets that are out there to rob us of our resources. If you can get back to the book, and many of us Africans don't like reading. Maybe East London has different Africans. But where I come from, Dr. Janik, many of the people don't like reading. They say if you have any secret to hide for an African, put it in a book. Even if it's money, when it's broke, put it in the center of their Bible. They will not read it. We are the ones that pay homage to crooks who call themselves prophets. Because we will not get to the book and read for ourselves and discover the truth. But the devil is a liar. We shall know the truth and the truth that we know shall set us free. Stand up on your feet right now. Oh, somebody singing the Holy Ghost. Singing the Holy Ghost, where are the singers? Oh, Hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus. Bring revelation to your church. May we walk in the truth. May we walk in the truth. May we start to finance the gospel to America, to Europe, to Asia, right from the soil of Africa. Go ahead, sing something, sing something that we will dance. We're going to dance in the Holy Ghost. My God is good. My God is good. Your God cannot be good, and you're looking as if, as if you just finished fighting with a chimpanzee. If your God is good, you need to dance in the African way. You, especially South Africans. Even when they are hungry, when it's time to dance, they still have the last energy to dance. You know, my brothers from another mother, that I said fell into bleach. You know, they can't keep to the beef. Oh, oh my God. Is, but if an African, oh, oh, my God is good. Come out here and dance. Come out here. Where are the Africans? Come here and dance. One, two, three, go. One, two, three, go. Yeah, my God.
Somebody says, how many times are we going to give here? How many times does God give us breath? He doesn't give you only for today and then say, come back next year. As long as you live, you keep giving. You keep giving. Those of you out there, this is not an event. This is not a broadcast to collect money. This is an event to give you an opportunity to take you to the next level. Because God took care of it before you knew of this channel. And he will still continue to do that. We appreciate what you are doing. We value what you are doing. But our trust is in God. Because he gives seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So find yourself a seed as you dance. And come here. Let's drop something here. And if you are watching wherever you are, there are details there. You may not dance to the front yet. But you can dance to your bank account. You can dance to an EFT. You can dance to whatever channel of giving and just connect. These days you don't have to be in a place physically to partake in an anointing. You can plug in wherever you are. So follow the different guidelines to giving. Are, are you finding another good song? Yeah, I missed you. Where have you been? Long time. Don't hide yourself, brother. Since I came, I've been looking for your face. I just came from Durban. I just met with Sean P. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so are we ready? Find a seed. If you don't have, do you know in Africa, those of you from Europe and America, you don't know. In Africa, we are allowed to borrow and not return. <laughs> when you don't have sugar, you borrow from your neighbor. But we never see the day of return. We just believe God will bring the return. So ask your neighbor for a seed. And then as they sing, we will dance to the front and drop our seed. And wherever you are, follow whatever modes and different channels and ways of giving. And follow the leading of the Holy Ghost, the leadership of the Holy Ghost, and obey the prompting. Let's go ahead.